This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none, and this little piggy cried wee wee home. Hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I got this great book, Five Little Pigs by Agatha Christie. And well, let's get right on to it. So, this book is probably one of the most interesting Agatha Christie Akiyopara uh, books that I have ever read, and you will soon know the reason why. Now, I started this little bookquester review with this nursery rhythm. This is a very old English nursery rhythm, which I honestly didn't know about, it's an originated from the UK apparently, and it's a very interesting rhythm. And this rhythm, it kind of sort of plays a sort of ironic part within this book. Now, here's the thing, there was a murder of Crail, Mr. Crail, and he was a mad painter. And her and his own wife was accused and tried and convicted of the murder. Now, you might ask the reason why. Well, there was a lot of evidence against her. And the, the fact is, was that Mr. Creel, he was having an affair with Elsa Greer, who was a prettier girl who was around 20 years younger than him. And they had an affair, and because of that, his, his wife was rightfully angry, and due to this, this might have led to the murder. And the murder was done by Conine via poisoning through through this nice beer bottle. Now, who was there? And Philip Blake, who is a stockbroker, he was there, he was one of the closest friends of Mr. Crail, the little piggy who went to the market, the stock broker. Meredith Blake, who is an amateur herbalist, the little piggy who stayed home. Elsa Greer, three time divorcee, a bit of a flirt, and the one who Mr. Crail had an affair with, the one who ate roast beef. William, Miss Williams, the the hard governess, who was the governess for Angela Warren, the, the very much younger sister of Mrs. Crail. The one who didn't have any roast beef, and the one who cried wee wee wee, because Angela Warren cried all the way home when her sister was convicted. Now, Let's continue on with the story. Sixteen years has passed, and Carla, who is Caroline Crail and Mr. Crail's daughter, after sixteen years after completely growing up, decided that she wanted to know the truth, because her mother, as her last words, has stated that she was not the one to commit the murder, and she knows that her mother wasn't the type of person to give her a false hope. Because her mother was the sort of person who would say, Okay, this is gonna hurt, but you gotta deal with it. Not the kind of mother who would say, This is gonna be fine, it won't hurt that much, and then it hurts a lot. So, very different. And her mother was the type of person who would give their child the truth, and help them deal with the truth. And she had said that she hadn't done the murder. And Carla was getting doubt. So she decides to hire the greatest detective of all time, Akio Poro, to solve a case that has already been resolved 16 years ago. Now, within this book, there will be very important quotes that you should remember. An argument that the two had, the, the Mr. Crail and Mrs. Crail had, the night before, I mean, in the morning, before Crail was murdered. I'll send her packing. It's too cruel. Now, we think that this refers to Angela Warren, who is the sister 
of our dear Caroline, the person who was convicted for the murder. And she was very young at the time, and, Ka- and obviously Mrs. Creel was very protective of her younger sister, and therefore was always on her side. And, and there was our centre packing was probably talking about the boarding school situation that they were discussing. Or so they thought. Now we all know there's some sort of twist in this, because there's a lot of evidence against Mrs. Crail. She was caught erasing the handprints on the beer bottle, erasing the fingerprints on the beer bottle, and then trying to forge her, her dead husband's stiff fingers on the beer bottle. Also, she was heard saying that I will murder you both or something like that before the day. Although, people who knew her knew that that didn't mean she would actually do it. And things like that. A lot of, quite a lot of circumstantial evidence piled upon it as well. She was the one who grabbed the beer, went there, gave it to her and, and gave it to the person, gave it to the guy and made him drink it. And then... Well, he died. So it it was sort of like okay, she she got the beer, she put the thing in, and she gave it to Mister Crail. And and Mister Poro, he notices a very very special line that Mister Crail says before drink after drinking the beer. Everything tastes stale today. Now, what significance does that phrase hold? I wonder. And. Finally, we all know that in this book there will be some sort of big, some sort of big twist at the end. So maybe the twist is Mrs. Crail did it, and that it was all a wild goose chase. Or perhaps Mr. and Mrs. Crail did it together, because Mrs. Crail convinced or managed to guilt trip Mr. Crail into doing it himself, but managed to get convicted about it. As well. What is going on? What had happened there 16 years ago? Well, you'll have to read the book to find out. And like always, your book quester are in the book quester. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you can. And goodbye. Poro notices, and Detective Poro, he notices some very, okay, I need to, that is what that is.